let me uh, jump directly into my first slide, uh, which deals with uh, the global production outlook. So uh, production uh, prospects in the Northern Hemisphere are more or less known at the moment as uh, harvests are mostly wrapping up. Um, larger crops are projected in the major producers, uh, including the United States, the European Union and Ukraine, with particularly uh, good results uh, expected in the latter. But the market focus is now on the South um, American uh, weather, where planting of 21, 22 crops uh, is currently underway. Conditions so far have been uh, uh, far from ideal, but uh, with no major immediate threat to crops. Uh, production um, is expected to be a record high, both in Argentina and Brazil, as the area is expected to expand. Um, but uh, there, are, uh, there are some uncertainties regarding the second crop uh, in Brazil, uh, Safrini crop. First of all, because of um, there are some fears about um, availability and prices of fertilizers and generally uh, inflated uh, input costs. And secondly, uh, competition from cotton crops is expected to be quite stiff uh, this season. And um, aside from that, both Argentina and Brazil um, are facing uh, building La Nini conditions uh, for the second year in a row, which could be adverse for production. And the Brazilian safrinic crop, just a few words about that, uh, why it is so important. It's not just because it's, uh, it accounts for um, about two thirds of uh, the country's production, but it's also a major source of the country's exports. And everyone uh, fears uh, the repetition of the previous year's crop failure. And another crop failure would be a very significant hit for the market. Now on the flip side of the forecasts, uh, some retreat in production is anticipated in India and uh, South Africa, but both countries are still expected to have larger than average uh, uh, crops. So all in all, we are potentially looking at uh, the largest uh, global uh, production ever, uh, which could be up by 8% uh, year on year. So the question really is uh, whether the significant increase in production and supply going to lead to um, significant recovery in stocks, well, possibly not, because uh, much of the rise in supply is expected to be absorbed by uh, high consumption. Um, and as a result, uh, ending stocks in 21, 22 are expected to recover only slightly from the previous year's eight year low. Now, comparing these levels of stocks to consumption also provides uh, quite a tight picture as uh, uh, stocks to use ratio for the world is expected to be the lowest in decade at around 24% by the end of 21, 22. And when we look at the, the same ratio, excluding China, which represents around two thirds um, of uh, the global tally for stocks, uh, it will be just 11%. And despite a slight uh, increase from year to year, this ratio will be below the long-term average. And the inventories in the major exporters, which you can see on the right-hand side, uh, could also rebound year on year, but overall they are expected to remain below the average level. And uh, it should be noted uh, as well that uh, this below average level um, is based on expectations for record crops, uh, both in Brazil and Argentina. So any downside uh, in production in those countries may lead to even, even lower uh, stocks uh, going forward. So going to uh, more detail on consumption, um, in light of um, an expected increase in availabilities, uh, we anticipate that uh, demand is set to rebound um, quite strongly uh, and the feed uh, use is expected to be the driver. But before uh, uh, talking about feed uh, use, uh, industrial demand, uh, the, the uptake is expected to increase at the fastest rate in four years as we observe highly attractive production margins uh, in the US ethanol sector, which uh, Thas uh, uh, Seth had mentioned in his presentation today. Um, and for feed, uh, a 5% uh, year on year increase is, is anticipated, which could be the highest, uh, the fastest in five years um, if uh, verified. So um, aside from expectations for a continued um, uptrend in meat consumption, meat demand, uh, obviously a feeding of maize will be uh, supported by a sharp uh, projected increase in supplies. And that increase in supply um, comes um, um, at the same time as um, availabilities of other feed grains, uh, particularly barley, are expected to decline year on year and increase in um, wheat uh, stocks is expected to be slower compared to the previous year. Having said that, uh, the right number of headwinds, uh, which could uh, cap overall feed demand going forward. First of all, a protracted uh, impact of uh, COVID in some countries, um, as well as uh, 
generally high feed prices, and I'll talk about prices uh, in a moment, um, as well as um, animal disease outbreaks, which uh, uh, Dee mentioned in his presentations as, as well. And um, now uh, reports of uh, fresh outbreaks of avian influenza in, in parts of uh, Europe uh, raises concerns uh, um, as well. Um, now, speaking about uh, feed costs, maize prices uh, remain relatively high, even despite uh, they have dropped quite, quite significantly from uh, their multi-year peak, which we saw back in May. Um, but the, what is more important is uh, uh, looking at things in, in perspective, because maize prices have become much more competitive uh, over the past uh, several uh, months compared to um, alternatives. Maize is now generally quoted at significant discount to uh, barley uh, prices or feed wheat prices, uh, which is the opposite uh, of the situ to the situation which we saw back in May. And also looking at forward prices uh, through uh, March 2022, the same situation. It indicates that maize should be competitive for inclusion in feed rations. Now, who is expected to drive uh, uh, that projected increase in demand uh, this season? So it's it's Pacific Asia, it's particularly China, the same as the, the previous season. Feeding of maize is also set to rebound in other regions, Europe, North um, and Central America, Near East Asia. In all these uh, three regions, uh, some substitution of uh, other coarse grains is anticipated and partial substitution of feed wheat is expected uh, in China in particular. So the important point to mention here is that most of that rise in feed demand uh, will come from um, either larger uh, domestic crops or uh, carryovers from the previous season. So this suggests that this significant rise in feed use will provide only limited support to uh, global trade this season. And talking about trade, in fact, uh, some countries may be smaller uh, buyers uh, uh, this year because of good uh, grain crops domestically. So this includes the, the European Union and parts of uh, Africa. Uh, overall, global imports are expected to contract by around 6% year on year, and much of that increase is anticipated to be in China for a number of reasons, because of a larger uh, maize crop, uh, uh, elevated feeding of alternatives, uh, moderating feed demand, and also uh, large imports in the previous year, which could be partially used uh, during this season. So uh, for our other countries, aside from that, challenges um, in the livestock and meat sectors uh, in Vietnam could uh, import, uh, could uh, cap imports uh, this season. Um, and uh, on the flip side, Brazil, uh, which is uh, a nut exporter and one of the major exporters, um, is seen as an unusually large buyer this season because of uh, very tight supplies, particularly in southern states uh, following a, a crop failure. Um, and also, uh, poor barley crops could uh, boost uh, import demand uh, in uh, some countries, particularly Turkey uh, and Canada. We're talking about headwinds to trade, um, in inflated freight prices um, are seen as a potential uh, containing factor. Delivery prices across all major grains and all seeds origins have uh, surged over the, over the past year. You can see this on the left uh, hand side graphic. Uh, here and in fact, uh, freight prices have increased much faster than grains prices. On the right hand side, you can see the comparison of two um, IGC indices for freight costs and for maize prices. And uh, freight prices have doubled during the past year, while maize prices are just one fifth, um, just uh, just one fifth higher uh, year on year. So, uh, lastly, on exports, shipments from Brazil have been really disappointing uh, uh, this season because uh, of uh, smaller domestic supplies and also firm to firm demand domestically. Um, even though uh, we anticipate that Safrina crop will be uh, very large, uh, the new crop market, uh, new crop arrivals are not expected to hit the market um, until uh, July, August uh, next year. So uh, this projection for July, June does not include, take that into account. So this reduced uh, presence of Brazil could provide uh, additional opportunities to other exporters. Uh, volumes are expected to rise significantly year in year for um, Ukraine and uh, Argentina. And this will be supported by uh, ample domestic availabilities, particularly in, in Ukraine following a very good harvest. 
And um, what will support uh, shipments from Ukraine is freight advantage to some Asian destinations compared to South American origins and also uh, the US Gulf. And uh, just recently we had, uh, we saw renewed buying interest from China. In terms of Argentina, um, export licenses are now at a very high level for the current season 2021, uh, but they much will depend in terms of timing of exports next season, uh, will depend on the split of into early season varieties and late season varieties for, for the ongoing plantings. Because um, uh, now some estimates suggest that 70% of the crop uh, might be for late season varieties, which will push uh, the, the upturn in uh, exports for that country uh, later in the season. And in terms of the US, uh, Seth uh, uh, outlined uh, very well the, the prospects for the next season. Uh, uh, a larger crop could potentially um, support uh, exports, but uh, demand from China could be uh, weak compared to the previous year. And uh, strong demand from local uh, ethanol producers could also limit volumes available for exports. And in terms of competition, as I've already mentioned, Argentina, it's now competitive, but uh, um, March will hinge on when new crop uh, arrivals will come to the market. So with that, I would like to